many of the seascapes that I've done where we have a calm evening and we are showing parts of a beach, we want a few waves that are washing ashore. They're not crashing waves or anything, they're just like little Latin loopers. So let me just show you how easy it is to put a couple of those in. We're going to go right up to here where I've already prepared some water movement. And what I want to do is just explain the basics of how you would decide where to put the wave and how to put that wave in. Let's say that down here in the bottom is the seashore and right up here is the horizon. Where should I put the first wave? Well, someone who likes to make up rules said put it halfway between the beach and the horizon. So given that, I'm just going to go ahead and put in this first wave. I'll put in a second one so you can see the basic principle as well. This is the first wave right in there. Now it doesn't look like a wave yet, but we at least have the swells on top and we have this dark color that's going straight across. Now, according to the same guy who makes up all these rules in life, says that the distance for the second wave should be halfway between the top of the first wave and the horizon. So we'll just go ahead and put a line in right there. It's a lot less height, but now you're starting to see the perspective of the first wave, the second wave, if we had a third wave, it'd be smaller yet and right there, and then fourth, fifth, sixth, sixth, seventh, and so it just becomes lines afterwards. I'm using uh, Prussian blue just to darken up this for this exercise, but once you have put in all of that dark painting, you want to use the Z stroke, which we've talked about before, to go ahead and blend the bottom of the wave into the ocean. So I've got a brush right now with absolutely no paint on it. I'm going ahead and see that Z stroke. There we go, all the way across the wave. And that just kind of blends that C wave right into the C. And then we'll come back here and do it for the little guy. Now most of these do not have this crashing wave, but they'll have a little bit of foam right on the top. And it's what they call chop. So we'll just go ahead and load a little bit of light blue color right here on the very tips. See that? I've got it right on the very tip of my brush. And I'll just place it right there. See? Uh, working so good. I'll just go ahead, place it back here as well. Then I want to clean my brush for the next step. There's not a lot of wave action going on. The water has just risen up a few inches and it's gotten to the point that it's so thin that it's just like crumbling to go back down to the bottom of the sea. So come up here with a dry brush, pull down and over. See, that's almost like a fish hook. Pull it down and over and you're getting the nicest little wave ever. Do it that way as well. Come up here, and these are smaller, so it's just a little bit of a twist. I could have gone to the left, but I decided this time to go to the right. And so it's just that easy to put in a couple of small waves into your seascape. 